All right, we're on there. All right, welcome everyone. This is Our Travel Experiences. I'm Kyle Rasmussen. Uh, this is episode two. And today I got with me uh, Sarah. Sarah, how's it going? Good, good. Good, good. I'm glad you're here. i um, super excited to talk about travel with you. Um, I know we've talked a lot about travel um, in the past as we've, you know, uh, sat there and drank drank our wine and uh, hung out. Um, so now we're doing it for the world to hear. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> um, well, first I wanted to ask you. So before we hopped on the podcast here, we were talking about um, traveling with kids. So you have a couple kids. And three to be exact. Three kids. Okay. Um, what's it been like traveling with them? I guess first, how old, how old are they? So right now I have an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, and a one-and-a-half-year-old. Okay. Um, wow. Traveling with them has never really been easy for me because I haven't done it much. Uh, but I'm getting better, and I've done it more and more, and I'm going to do it again here in January. Me and the baby are going to go down to Arizona. So um, I'm, I'm pretty, feeling pretty confident about this, this next flight with Carmen. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. So where, where have you gone with the kids? Our first trip was to Hawaii um, with the two oldest. Carmen wasn't here yet, and it the, the kids did actually really, really good. I was really proud of them. Um, my middle child did throw up on the way home on the airplane, but uh, it was a pretty rocky ride there. But they did so good on the airplane. They watched their movies. They uh, had snacks. They listened in the airport. They stood really close. So... I can't really complain about them. I was just stressed out about losing them or, yeah, you know, yeah. taking care of them, making sure that they had all their needs met in a crazy busy airport and on the plane and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm sure, especially in the airports, just kind of making making sure that they're safe and got everything you need, trying to get through security. I'm sure that's got to be a stressful experience. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But I think that they were kind of scared too. It was the first, both of their first times in an airport oh, wow. on an airplane. So they were really good about staying close, staying together, staying mm. with either mom or dad or, you know, so I was really proud of them, but yeah. just my I mama mean, bear mode was on yeah. my <laughs> high alert. But yeah. Are they uh, hooked on traveling now? Chloe flying? loves it. <laughs> Chloe loves it. She loves to say that she got to be on an airplane. She loves to say she got to go to, you know, this place or the other place or whatever. So Chloe really, really likes it. She's my oldest. She's my eight-year-old. So, um, yeah, I would say she's hooked for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Jarrett, my middle one, he, I don't even think he remembers yeah. the plane ride, to be honest with you. He was only four at the time. No, he was only three, maybe. I think he was only three. Oh, so wow. he doesn't, he doesn't really remember, but yeah. Chloe sure does. So. Yeah, that's so fun. I remember when I was a kid, the some of the best memories that I have were, uh, flying on airplanes, we're you know traveling with the family, going on road trips to different places. Um, that definitely got me hooked on traveling uh, from a young age. So that's cool to see that uh, Chloe's hooked on that now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never. I my first time on an airplane. I think I was like in my twenties. No, that's a lie. I was I was in like I was like fourteen. Okay. I think it was. I was fourteen, but. We would only go on road trips, and now I freaking hate going on road trips. I hate driving. <laughs> I hate being in the car. We've been talking about going up to uh, Vancouver Island. We have a friend up there. Mm. But we'd have to drive, and it's like a nine-hour trip yeah. to drive. Yeah. There's a two-hour ferry, and then you have to drive another hour after that to get to our friend's house. And I was like, wow. no, I don't think I want to be in the yeah. car for that long. <laughs> no, no thanks. So if, if we were to go, we would have to go for like a week mm -hmm. uh, just for my sake and the kids' sake because... Yeah. I, I wouldn't time. want to do it. That's too much being in the car, too much being confined. So Yeah. Um, have you gone on, on road trips with the kids as well? Um, not, not too far. The farthest we've been is like over to the coast. So like a four and a half, five four hour five drive, hours, yeah. which is like a max. Because mm -hmm. Jared gets so car sick. Like he'll be in the car. For, if he's in the car for more than like 45 minutes, he usually throws up. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then it's such a windy road to get over to the beach. Like mm -hmm. we just have to pop Dramamine like it's candy <laughs> with him because if not, he's just miserable. And then I'm miserable because I have to clean everything up and the car stinks and he stinks. It's just, yeah. so we, 
we try to avoid car trips for sure. Yeah. Well, there, there's a good tip for all the listeners. Give your kids a tram with me. Yeah. <laughs> Make or, the trips a lot better. And, you know, I, I, I have been saying this for about a year now. I need to start keeping those, like, little blue throw-up bags, like, from oh, the yeah, hospital. Yeah. I need to keep a couple in my car for when he does feel sick. Then I can just say, okay, here, mm-hmm. throw up into here. You know what I mean? And um, so I can get pulled over so you don't throw up all over yourself, all over the car. Yeah. So that, I feel like, is a a good thing to have on hand are those little throw up bags. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So I know you mentioned, you know, a few different things already. Um, but what are some, some of the main challenges that you found, uh, traveling with kids and what are some of the, some of the great things you found from it? Well, definitely the hardest thing is, um, packing everything around. So Mm -hmm. I went, I took Chloe and Carmen down to, um, Arizona. We flew and it was just me and yes chloe can pull her own suitcase and stuff like that but um you know i only have two arms and i still had to carry carmelita at that time um and i did put her in a pack which was the best idea ever to keep her confined Mm -hmm. um but still carrying 97 different bags of (laughs) everything and then you know i didn't want to bring a pack and play because I would have one more thing I have to carry. I didn't bring a stroller because it's just one more thing I have to carry. So I had to find all of those when I was down in Arizona, which thankfully I have cousins and friends down there that they have little babies and stuff that I could just borrow the stuff. Um, but just juggling all of the things that you have to pack for children yeah. and making sure that certain things are readily available. Like I can just grab a diaper. I don't have to mm-hmm. dig through a suitcase or grab a snack so I don't have to go buy one or, again, dig through something and yeah. make sure everybody has their water and their juice or snacks. <laughs> like they ha- yeah. they're warm enough. Like it, it's just a lot. There's a big big long checklist for yeah. sure well shoot it's sometimes hard to pack for just yourself just one person right let alone yeah. all the kids too yeah yeah um, and they can't they can't help you really you know mm-hmm. they don't know what to pack yeah, what know. they what they're gonna need they don't think that way so yeah i, I it was hard it, that, that was the hard part was packing everything all the things yeah. but um yeah it seems like with kids especially they're just there's so much more coordination that you have oh yeah absolutely absolutely for sure and trying to time which which is the best flight for naps Mm. and so they'll sleep and you know different things like that too and be a logistics expert yeah (laughs) i highly recommend layovers though with little ones um so that you can get out they can get out and stretch their legs um Mm. i would say like over the age of two I, i highly recommend um layovers with infants um, you know, a straight shot, just get there. Hopefully they sleep the whole time on the plane. That's great. But, um, when, once they can start walking and running, like give them a little break in between to stretch yeah. their legs before yeah, they have to be confined. Mm-hmm. So you know, like, especially going to a place like Hawaii, mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, what, five, six, six hour hours. Flight. Yeah. That's a long time for a kid yeah. to be cooped up. That's a long time for me yeah. to be cooped up, <laughs> let alone a kid. And especially one that has to sit on my lap the whole time or, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, for and sure. they can't even drink wine either. No, I know, I know. Oh, but that is one thing that I do recommend is to upgrade your seat to, like, the premium if you're okay. flying Alaska yeah. Air. You know, it's like, what, 50 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever, mm. and you get to it's drink worth, for free, and you get some more leg room, and it's just worth it. It's so worth it for the kids, for me. You know, they always have to go to the bathroom, mm. try and get an aisle seat so you don't have to crawl over everybody yeah. if they're sleeping or eating or drinking or whatever. So, um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, if you have a kid that's going to listen to you and is pretty well behaved, like you'll be fine in the airport, you know, mm-hmm. hold my hand, stay close, make sure I, you can always see me. If you can't see me, I can't see you type thing. And yeah, so it's really not as bad. But that first time traveling is actually really scary with kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. But, I know every time I see, uh, you know, parents in the airports with their, their little infants or, you know, young kids, I'm like, oh, man. It's got to be so much work. There was one time, um, I think it was this last time when we got back from Arizona. I'm not 100% sure sure on that or not. But um, there was this mom and she had five kids and they they all had to be under the age of 10. All of them. They were little. And there was one, you know, that was like throwing a fit and she's standing in line waiting for food to feed them, you know. And so... Mm -hmm. I bought a box of donuts and I was like, Hey, you know, like, will you give these to this mom back here with all these kids? Like, and tell her she's doing a good job. Like, don't tell her, you know, it was for me or whatever, but like, Mm -hmm. just hopefully it'll keep the kids, you know, occupied for a little bit and they can have a little can, little sugar or whatever. And, 
and hopefully they'll sit still for her for just a few minutes because you could tell like she was just exhausted like yeah. she didn't seem like she was like super stressed out but she was definitely like okay okay we're almost mm-hmm. done like you could you could just see it on her face yeah. but you know her older kids were doing really really good and they were helping out with the littles and stuff so I just was That's like good. you know like she needs to know that she's doing the best she can and she's doing a good job like you only got one throw in a temper tantrum and it could be five so yeah anyways but I think that's a good um I mean that's really cool that you did that I think um all of us who who don't have kids with us when we're traveling um or just in general should be a little bit more uh understanding Mm -hmm. and, and patient with uh parents have young kids around absolutely because especially if they're going on vacation the vacation is almost more work absolutely than if, you're take, if you're taking kids it's not a vacation it's a trip yeah that's what we say in my yeah. house is if you take kids it's not a vacation yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know you know a lot of people get upset about um you know babies crying on planes and stuff like that but i mean there's there's just nothing you can do no. there and you just gotta understand like yeah the parent, the parent probably doesn't want to be dealing with that either. So. No, for sure. And that was my big fear. Like, oh my gosh, what if Carmen just screams the whole time? And my cousin was like, so what? If she screams the whole time, it's nothing. there's nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. If you try and give her a passy, her ears probably hurt from the altitude change, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you and I can know that we need to chew gum or something and we can deal with it. But she doesn't know what's happening, yeah. you know? So if she's screaming, she's screaming. Mm-hmm. Like... There's nothing you can do about it. And if those people hate you, then those people hate you. You're never going to see them again. Yeah. So who cares? So that was really nice of her to tell me that. Because I was like, I guess you're right. Like, there isn't, there, I can't control it. Mm-hmm. I can do my best, but. Yeah, it just is what it is. It is. <laughs> absolutely it is. So. So um, I don't think we answered the, like, rewarding moments. What, what has been some of the best experiences with kids? Um, I mean, not <laughs> really. Uh, not really any. Just just this last summer, taking my eight-year-old, she was seven at that, that time, um, just what a big helper she was with, mm-hmm. um, you know, with the baby and carrying things and doing her best and staying occupied on the plane or sleeping or whatever it was. Um, she was a trooper. So that was pretty rewarding that I was like, dang, like, you're growing up, like... <laughs> I'll take you places more often, but other than that, there's really no rewarding moments with <laughs> traveling with kids. So, I guess it yeah. might be like rewarding to see them experience whatever. Oh place yeah, you're yeah, in. for sure, yeah. And she did. She got. She had a really good time um, down in Arizona with our friends and stuff. So that was that was good. I guess, yeah. Right. Cool. Um, any other uh, tips or advice you have for? parents that are traveling with kids maybe for the first time um kind of just what I said you know have have stuff that you know you're gonna need snacks and diapers and milk water juice whatever and spill proof containers for Mm -hmm. sure spill proof um have them at the top of your bag and whatever you can buy where you're going that's what I would do you know I would Mm -hmm. take like five diapers or however many you think you're gonna need for your three, four, five, eight hour flight, whatever it is, day of travel. Um, And then when you get where you're going, just run to a Walmart or a Safeway or whatever and just buy a bag of diapers. Um, Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough that I didn't have to pack a pack and play for Carmen to sleep in. Um, But you just, just check that stuff. You know what I mean? Like don't, I was like, I just want to have everything with me on the plane just in case. And um, actually turned out that the, the flight was pretty full. So they were like, Oh, we'll check your bags and stuff for free. Mm -hmm. And so I had to check the car seat anyways. Um, and so I just ended up checking everything except for our carry-ons. And that was like the best move ever. Yeah. So I didn't have to worry about the, let. you know, we stopped in Seattle. We flew out of Pasco into Seattle. And um, I didn't have to worry about our luggage, getting it off the mm. top rack of the airplane there. Yeah. Um, especially carrying an infant on my front. <laughs> I had her in that little pack thing. Yeah. And... Um, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And I do remember flying home. I, I had to have, have somebody put my bag up there for me and get it mm. back down for me because I just could not do it with her on my front. Mm. And I didn't want to unbuckle her and put her in a seat because she would have just ran off. And yeah, <laughs> it was better to have her just confined the whole time to my chest. But mm. um, yeah. And entertainment for them, I think, is important. Um, and I did actually end up giving Carmen some Benadryl before we went. The doctor did say it would help with her ears, and then hopefully it would put her to sleep. And yeah. so she did sleep on the plane for the most part. Um, but if you're okay with, you know, giving your 
kids just a little bit of Benadryl. I, I did it. I, I think I gave her like two milliliters or something small, mm. but yeah. Um, and she never cried about her ears hurting or anything like that. She never indicated. That's good. So I'm gonna say that it helped, but I, guess I, I don't know, know sometimes for sure. even for me it, it can be extremely painful mm -hmm. when your ears ears get plugged up or pop or whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember recently there was one time. It was a couple months ago. I can't remember where I was coming from. I was coming back back to uh, Washington State here, and um, man, my ear just was, it was one of the most painful experiences I've yeah. had in a long time. Yeah, I um, bet. I don't know what the deal was, but it was rough, and so I can't imagine for kids, especially who don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. don't know and they can't communicate happening. to yeah. you what's happening or, you know, what what's hurting or whatever at that time, so, Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, going going back to the luggage really quick, I I don't have kids, so I can't really speak to this. But from what I've observed in my travels, is that uh, if you can check your bags, especially if you can check them for free, is definitely the, the the way to go. Yeah. Because then all you have to worry about is carrying the kid. Yeah, for sure. Instead of hauling your luggage. Around. The only the only downside to that though is if like you have to wait for your luggage. You yeah. know what I mean? So when my husband and I were flying back from Miami in October, we had caught some fish on our boat. And so we had to buy a cooler and, you know, package mm -hmm. the fish and check that bag. And we had to stand in line for close to two hours in order to check the bag. We did have to pay for it, whatever. I think it was like 30 bucks. Um, and then when we landed in Seattle, Washington, um, we had to wait for another like 45 minutes, mm -hmm. which is uncharacteristic of Alaska, but still it happens. And so that was like the worst part was we were absolutely exhausted and yeah. standing there waiting for this stupid fish. Like, <laughs> you know, we didn't have to check any other bags. We just had yeah. each one of us had a carry on. So we had that luggage. And so then just waiting around for that stupid cooler, we were like, mm, how bad do we want this mahi mahi? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I wonder do you think it probably took longer because it was it was fish and not like a suitcase? Uh, no, no, everybody. The whole oh, entire everybody. plane oh, wow. was waiting. Wow. Um, but it was a super full plane. Like they were asking people, they were like, oh, you know, if you don't get on this flight, like we'll put you in a hotel room tonight and mm -hmm. you can fly out. I think it was, they had to wait till Monday though. And we flew out on a Saturday. Oh, wow. um, but we'll put you in a hotel room and you'll get like 750 points, miles mm -hmm. or some, something, you know, to compensate you. and. Yeah whatever and um it was just a super full super full yeah. flight and i think that that's kind of why was they just yeah. had a bunch of luggage that they had to get on and off the planes so mm -hmm. you know i've noticed that recently i think airlines have kind of got uh crunched in a way because they because of the covid pandemic mm -hmm. they took away some flights and then now people are traveling again, and so there's not as many flights for all the people. Yeah. And so I know I've noticed at least on the last few flights I've been on, they've they've asked for people to take a different flight, and they'll give them a, you know some sort of credit or whatever. Right. Um, so it's kind of interesting. I hope they can resolve that problem. Yeah, for um, sure. Because you don't want you don't don't want any travelers being unhappy on your. On your flights. Yeah, and everybody was unhappy on yeah. our last flight from <laughs> Miami to Seattle. Like, there were yeah. so many complaints, so many complaints. So, but yeah, it is sometimes. what it is. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. They're doing the best that they can. And, you know, I, I, me and my husband, we didn't complain to anybody. We just were like, yeah, it was kind of shitty, but it's not like we're like, oh, we're never going to fly Alaska again. Yeah. Like, yeah. it happens. And mm. we don't travel that often. And it, that's never, ever happened to us before. So, it is what it is. But it did just suck. We didn't fly in until like, I don't know, 11.30 and then mm -hmm. at night and yeah. then wait around for another 45 minutes to an hour before we even got back to our car and then we still had to drive two and a half hours home. <laughs> so it was just a really long yeah. night, really long day of traveling, but yeah, that's what it is. Yep, that's so. for sure. So you said you went to Miami. How was, how was that? It was All great. The across the country. Yeah, we went kidless though, so <laughs> that's probably, <laughs> probably why it was so fun. great. Yeah, because we could just we could sit in the bar at the airport and just drink, and um, you know we got to just drink on the flight, and we could take naps while we were there in Miami. We didn't have to worry about anybody else taking care of anybody else. It was yeah. just me and my husband, so it was really nice to travel without kids. Uh, we haven't, we've never actually flown. Oh, that's a lie. We did fly to uh, LA one time, but that was many many years ago, 
Um, but other than that, we, we don't go anywhere without our kids, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious, what was it like, you know, having fun with the kids and, you know, obviously being around them all the time and then taking this trip without them and being separated for a week or however long it was? What was that experience like? Um, so I'm just going to say, like, my husband gets sick too, so we made it in to pass the security and he went and ran to the trash can and threw up because he was so nervous because they stopped his bag <laughs> because I forgot that there was a bottle of Desitin in there okay. from the last time that I had traveled and so they had to search his bag so of course he's freaking out it's not like yeah. we were carrying anything we yeah. shouldn't have been but he's still that's... just like panicked and he just as soon as they got done talking to him he just took off to the trash can and I had these people walk by, they were security, and he was like, did you lose somebody? I was like, oh no, he's over there throwing up in the trash can, and he turns and he's like, moms are always taking care of somebody, and I was like, how did you know I was a mom? Like, yeah, you're right, I'm yeah. always taking care of somebody. So, uh, it was kind of funny, but... I totally get that. It's it's always so nerve-wracking going through security, even though, you know, you know, like, I'm not doing anything wrong, like, I don't have anything bad yeah. with me, but it's just always nerve-wracking, like, what right. are they going to do to me? Yeah. For sure. Well, I mean, I don't feel that way. I'm just like, okay, I'm, you know, I made sure I packed my own bag. I know that there's nothing in here, so yeah. I'm not ever that worried, but yeah, whatever. Usually I have a couple cocktails in me too by that time. <laughs> that always helps. But, um, yeah. No, but then uh, leaving the kids for a week, it was really hard. Like that first, so we went over to, we drove from Yakima to Seattle and stayed the night because we had an early flight out of Seattle. And that first night, I was like, I couldn't sleep. I was just thinking, man, I already missed my baby. Like, <laughs> I've never been away from my oldest for this long. And uh, so it was a little hard. But once we got down to Miami and we got into, like, going to the beach and, you know, walking along the boardwalk and stuff like that, it was fine. Um, I, I FaceTimed them pretty much every single day, though, and talked to them every single day. But um, it was okay. It was, it was good. It was, like I said, it was nice to just go and sit in the bar and... Uh, have a couple co cocktails before he got on the plane and I could order a cocktail on the plane and not have to worry about juggling a baby on my lap yeah. and this, that, and the other. So, yeah. um, I did, I, when I flew to Arizona with my youngest and my oldest, I did, we sat down to get something to eat and I did walk up to the bar and I got a glass of wine. I remember, <laughs> and you know, the people were so nice around us. I think we were at SeaTac and, um, uh, it was busy. It's always a busy airport, but I, we ordered food and it wasn't ready like right away. So mm -hmm. we got a ticket and, um, waiting for our number to be called and that did, fi they finally did call it. And there were these, um, uh, these guys, you know, just kind of the table next to us. And he was like, Oh, it's fine. You know, you can go, I'll, you know, I'll keep an eye on your kids. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> like, I'm not going to trust you to watch my kids, you know? And I was like, Oh no, it's okay. Like, I'm just going to take them. And, but I did end up leaving our love it luggage and uh, the guy was like, oh, it's fine. Like, I'll just keep an eye on it for you, you know? And, and then the next ticket, I, I think we got ordered from two different places. So the next ticket got called and he was like, I'll go get it for you. The guy was like, I'll go get your food for you so you don't have to leave the kids. And I was like, thanks. And I ended up talking to them and they were really nice guys. They were um, law enforcement in New York. And oh, wow. um, anyways, they were just cool dudes. They were really nice. It was really nice of them to offer that. And yeah. then there was another family with like a mom and dad, grandpa and grandma and then a little kid and he also that that grandpa was also like keeping an eye on the kids and my stuff for me and stuff so it was really nice to have like you know strangers can be so kind mm -hmm. sometimes and it, it was really nice to have come across some people like that that are willing yeah. to because it takes a village to, oh, yeah. to raise a kid yeah. like it, you can't do you can't do shit on your own like <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was just pretty cool but yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in your uh, in your travels, have you experienced that most people are pretty friendly or? Um... Yeah, especially if you have kids, for sure. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, you might come across a couple people that are like, "Shut that baby up," or yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. But there's always a few of them. <laughs> always, yeah. You can't avoid that. So, but for the most part, like I've seen other moms travel, and you know, there was one time we were sitting on a plane, and this mom had, she, she was probably like nine or ten months old, baby. And the flight attendant was carrying the baby down the aisle for the mom because the mom had the stroller and the car seat and the diaper bag and then her luggage and all this stuff, you know? And so the flight attendant's just carrying the baby. And I mean, I was like, that's so awesome. Like, that's so kind of you. Like, I don't know. I just remember like my heart like felt really full seeing that because if that flight attendant would have done that for me, like I would have just been like, oh my gosh, you know, thank mm -hmm. you so much for noticing that 
yeah, I could use an extra set of arms. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, yeah. It's nice when you come across people like that, so. Yeah, definitely. I think we could all be a little little kinder to each for other. For sure, <laughs> for sure. I know, I know. Um, I have to ask, have you traveled with the kids during COVID at all? Yes. What's that experience been like? Oh, uh, it's fine. I mean, they just have to wear their masks, and which they wear them at school all day long anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I've only traveled with Chloe, my oldest, I guess, and Carmen um, this last summer, which, you know, we were in full swing of COVID. So, mm. um, but and it was fine. And, you know, like I said, yeah. a lot of the flight attendants and the people in the airport, like if they see a kid that have the mask under their nose, like they don't say anything. You know, if it was an adult, they would be like, okay, well, you know, can you please put your mask yeah. up or whatever they do. But they're really nice about it. And mm. I, don't, I don't mind following the rules and neither does Chloe. So it's really it's really not that big of a deal yeah. not that big of a game changer and okay. nobody got sick from the airplane nobody you know whatever we were we're fine yeah, so that's good yeah i don't think that it was that big of a deal personally but okay good yeah i know you see those videos of you know the families getting kicked off the planes because the kid won't wear the mask oh jeez. can't imagine that no <laughs> um, no but you know i think again mo- most people most you know, flight attendants, you know, companies are going to be pretty, you know, nice and friendly to yeah. you and obviously understanding, but again, there's always, you know, a few that mm-hmm. aren't. Yeah, no, for sure. So, for sure. But yeah. So kind of shifting gears a little bit, what, um, what has been your favorite travel experience? Um, I'm I, I'm gonna have to say Miami, just our most recent okay. one. Um, the plane was a the plane ride was like I said a little bit longer. Six hours is like a long time for me, mm-hmm. and that's what it was. Um, but again, we upgraded our seats, so we got to drink for free, and we got some snacks, and then we had extra leg rooms on the way down there. And then on the way back, we didn't upgrade the seats because it was a super late flight, and we had to drive home from Yakima, so we figured mm-hmm. we wouldn't be uh, drinking much anyways. Um, and there's just such a huge difference, the seats yeah. <laughs> and the space. Um, but it, it was just nice to go with just my husband and I. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just have to say Miami. It was nice warm weather. It wasn't super hot. It wasn't super humid. It did rain a couple of days though. The last two days we were there, but other than that, it was just, yeah, what, what time of year was that? It was in October. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A middle, right, right in the middle of October. So. I would guess, I mean, I don't know much about Florida, but I would assume that like October through the rest of the winter is probably a good time to, mm-hmm. to be there. Yeah. So it's not like blistering hot. Um, mm-hmm. It was still in the low 80s, high 70s, which is perfect for us. Yes. It's pretty but, nice, yeah. especially compared to where you're coming from. And it's well, yeah, and then 30 the, and snowing. And the <laughs> people down there, you know, that we was, we visited some friends down there and they, she was like wearing a sweater all the time mm-hmm. and she was like freezing. She had the heater on in her car and I was like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Yeah. She's like, it's cold. It's winter time down here. And I'm like, girl, it's like 80 degrees. It's like yeah. 75, whatever. And she was like, oh no, nobody gets in the water this time of year. Not if you're like live down here. It's yeah. too cold. And I was like. I don't feel like it's cold at all. Yeah. You obviously haven't put your toes in the ocean up here on, mm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's it's amazing how your body adjusts to your your environment. I remember, you know, living in San Diego for four years. I definitely felt the cold a lot more coming coming home in yeah. the winter time. Um, it was just so much colder than when I lived here before, because <laughs> um, I was used to seventy five and sunny every day. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, for sure. No, I totally understand it. It's funny. It's funny though when you see someone complaining about it being eighty degrees out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. But... I'm pause it. <laughs> All right, we're back here. Um, thanks for uh, filling up the wine here. Oh yeah. Glad we could drink some wine and do this. <laughs> what I'm good for is keeping your glass full. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So during uh, during the little break there, uh, we're kind of chatting about. Uh, you know, different types of travel. Um, I know, Sarah, you like more of the vacation, kind of relaxing, sitting on the beach. Get away from life and mom duties, yeah. Yeah, okay. And and someone like me, I I like to go and really get immersed in the history and the culture and- Yeah, you you travel for purpose, (laughs) yeah, for sure. Uh, Which I I know is definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but, um, so yeah, what, what have you really, 
gotten out of you know being able to to take those breaks from normal life like that how, they're needed that, yeah. <laughs> that they're definitely needed um you know like I said it was nice in Miami I could go and I could take a nap we could just lay on the beach and just have absolutely no schedule and and that's what we did down when going to Miami we said like we're not planning anything until we get down there if we want to mm. go on a charter fishing thing like we'll book it when we get down there if there's even openings and if there's not then it wasn't meant to be mm. um so and that was really nice like here being a mom I like I'm on a schedule I have to have to yeah. you know I have to be up by a certain time kids have to be out the door by a certain time uh, I have to pick them up by a certain time feed them by a certain time get them to bed blah blah blah, blah. and so over there you know if I wanted to go to bed at seven o'clock <laughs> in the evening I could or yeah. if I wanted to stay up until midnight I could so mm. um so it's kind of it's nice to get away from that right that rigid schedule and just yeah. kind of go with the flow for sure but I also feel like humans are like they need to be on a schedule. So mm -hmm. coming back, like a week was a, good, a long time. It was a good chunk of time, but coming back, it was nice to like come back to my schedule and my yeah. routine and get back in the swing of things for sure. But would you say like the, those vacations are kind of a nice reset? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely push the reset button. Yeah. I think that's a good way to look at it. Do you think there's, you said a week was kind of long. Do you think there's like a, a amount of time that's too long to... Take well, I, a normal life. I mean, I hear people going on cruises for 14 days, and we have some older friends here that they go to uh, Hawaii for the entire month of February. Oh, wow. Which they're older, they're retired, they don't have yeah. the, you little, know, the little bit different situation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And good for them. They go to the same place, they stay in the same room, you know, the people there know them by name, mm -hmm. they've been doing it for years now. And so that's great for them. And hopefully I can get to that stage when I'm their age. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. for now, like a, a week was more than enough time. Mm -hmm. Like five days even would be okay. But it just depends on how far you're going too. Because if you have to waste an yeah. entire day of travel, it's it's kind of not worth it to only stay five days. Because really yeah. you only get three days to play then. Mm -hmm. But... Um, you know, my husband and I also were talking about taking a red eye next time. So hopefully we can sleep on the way there and then wake up and have, you know, all the time. We get an extra day, really, instead yeah. of wasting it to travel. But um, I always go back and forth on the red eyes. On, on the one hand, it's like, yes, you get all that extra time. But on the other hand, it's like. You're really not comfortable sleeping on mm -mm. the plane. If you even get tired. to sleep. Yeah. 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 Um, I do agree with that, too. Yeah, but... no, I, I go back and forth on that for sure. Yeah. But... Yeah. I definitely don't recommend um, red eyes with the kids, with the babies, though. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. That was... I mean, they did they did fall asleep on the plane, but, like, leaving at 11, 11 o'clock or something like that, mm -hmm. I think we did from Hawaii, like, they were just absolutely exhausted in the airport, and yeah. I would let them take a little cat nap, but then I had to wake them up and get them on the plane. And mm -hmm. so I don't, I don't really recommend the red eyes for yeah. the kiddos. But. That's, that's pretty tough from Hawaii too. It aren't most of the flights red eyes to get back to. I honestly don't even know. That was I feel like, that's what I remember at least three yeah. years ago. So yeah. 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 That's tough. I know. I know there's been some times for me personally where it's either a really early flight or a really late flight and I'm just exhausted and like trying to stay awake and like all, all I want to do is sleep but mm -hmm. I gotta get to the airport and make sure I get on the plane and right get to where uh, you're staying and everything hassle, like that but. yeah definitely yeah. I know and in January I'm, I'm the baby and I are gonna go down to Arizona and we fly out of Yakima at uh what is it like that six uh, five or six five yeah, yeah. That, so I think it's like a six a.m mm. flight and um, I'm hoping that, you know, since I have to wake her up so early that it'll be, like, perfect timing that she'll just take, like, a super early nap that day on the plane. But who knows? We'll see how it goes. But, yeah. 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 Um, one, any uh, fun trips planned in the coming year? Uh, just to go down to Arizona. That's not really a fun one, though. It's not vacation. I'm going down to um, visit my cousin. They just had... Uh, well, he just had his second set of twins. Second and set of twins. Second wow. set of twins, yeah. And so I'm just going to go down and um, help them with childcare uh, for a little bit. Um, but I think my husband and I are making it an annual thing that we go down to Miami every October. So I'm going to get on line here, hopefully before the end of the year, and see if they have any flights yet mm -hmm. for October. So last time I looked, they didn't. 
Yeah. But other than that, I don't know. We might be going to New Orleans. Yeah, we better do that. Um, together, so that would be fun. Um, that'd, be, that'd be a good time. It's, that's a. From what I've heard, it's a really fun city. Uh, one that I haven't got to experience yet. So yeah, me neither. We can make so. that happen. Yeah, I think that'd be a great idea. I'd probably drink lots of wine while I'm on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll drink lots of wine on any trip I'm on. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. Anything else? Uh, any other advice or tips that you want to um, tell people? You know, just just to stay calm with your kids. I feel like your kids feed off your energy. So if you're all stressed out and worked up, they're probably going to be pretty anxious mm-hmm. as well. But if you're just calm, cool, and collected, like they, they probably will be too. So lots of snacks. Don't let anybody get hangry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah. I guess one more question on that. Um, do you you typically bring snacks with you? Yes. When you're flying, yeah. okay. You don't buy it at the airport. No, no. I I try and pack whatever I think that okay. the littles will want, um, yeah. and it it goes through security and everything just fine. Yeah. So, yeah. I've never had an issue. Yeah. But. That's that's smart. One less thing to think about while you're in the airport. Well, yeah, because if you have a flight that lands at, you know, 5 or 6 o'clock, most places are already closed, like, mm-hmm. or they're closing. And there might yeah, be especially one... Especially now with COVID. Yeah, and weird. there might be, like, one place open, which, I mean, there was a McDonald's that was open, I think, at, I don't remember what time it was, like, 10 or something like that at night. But mm-hmm. other than that, the entire airport was closed, so... Yeah. Um, just be prepared for that, that you might not be able to buy snacks. Mm-hmm. or food at the airport depending on your flight time too so yeah that's that's been one I've, I've become a lot more aware of um in the last couple of years flying is because of covid the the hours are a lot weirder with mm-hmm. places in the airports yep and so um you, you definitely want to plan ahead for making sure that you get you know a meal at a, a normal time that you would get a meal or have snacks ready because you might get to your destination and everything's closed yep. It, yeah, for sure. I know I always try and travel with at least like two or three protein bars. Yeah. Something that both the kids and I would like just in case, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I think having like a protein bar, a granola bar or something with you, always a good way to yep. go. Yep. You <laughs> Even if you're not on. flying. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that That is actually a true story. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, awesome. Well, we'll wrap this up here, but Sarah, thanks for uh, taking time out of your day to do this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Definitely uh, have a lot of respect for you as a mom, as a mom who's traveled, and uh, super glad that we could drink some wine and, and talk about it. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's good well cheers. Cheers. Bye, everyone.